Hi, my name is Mark. It's a joy to be with you again today. The Word of God is alive. So I hope you have your Bibles there. We're going to look in the Scriptures and find out the will of God for your healing. The Word of God is the will of God. <clears throat> the will of God is the Word of God. Psalm 40 verse 8 says this, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I delight to do your will. And then he says, your word or your law is within my heart. So the word of God is the will of God. <clears throat> We're looking at the word. Romans 12 verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is. So we're renewing our mind to the Bible <clears throat> so that we may prove what the will of God is. So the Word of God is the will of God. So sometimes people ask, well, what's the will of God or how do I find out the will of God concerning healing? Well, look at Jesus. John 6, verse 38. <clears throat> John chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So Jesus is doing the will of the Father. Everything Jesus said and did was a direct revelation of the unchanging will of God for all people for all time. So if you want to know what the will of God is, look at Jesus. He is the expressed image of God. <clears throat> Hebrews 1 verse 3 says, He is the radiance of His glory and the exact representation of His nature. 2 Corinthians 4 4 says, He is the image of God. John 14 9 says, He who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus said that. If you've seen me, you've seen Him. You've seen the Father. Isn't that cool? John 10 verse 30 says, I and the Father are one. So if you want to know what the will of God is, simply look at Jesus. <clears throat> look at Jesus. Everything Jesus said and did was a revelation of the will of God, a direct revelation of the perfect will of God for all people, for all time. So look at the scriptures, look at the word here, and we'll see Jesus doing the will of God. Isn't that great? So today we're going to pick up again with some of the healing accounts in the New Testament. John 4, verse 46. <clears throat> John 4, verse 46. This is the healing of the nobleman's son. So last time we know that some people picked up, we talked about the paralytic, the paralyzed guys being healed, right? And Jesus seeing their faith. The time before that, there was a crippled man at Lystra and that man had faith to be made well, and uh, he was healed by his faith. <clears throat> Here again, we're seeing somebody come on, by, on behalf of their son, and they're coming to Jesus. Now, some of people might ask, well, Jesus is not here, you know, in the flesh right now. He's here by the Spirit. So how do we touch Jesus? Because many times in the New Testament, you see that people were touching Jesus, or Jesus touched them. Right? There's a couple different ways that Jesus ministered. Two main ways was Jesus touched people, or they touched him. And the other one is by the spoken word. He would speak a word, and people could be healed. Because he had authority, he had power. He knew who he was as a, as a son of God. He didn't operate as God. He operated as a man, anointed by the Holy Spirit. Just as we can operate as a man or woman, anointed by the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that Jesus had is now upon us. And so we can go about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil as well. So we have the same <clears throat> Spirit of God that he had, so we can still do the same things that Jesus did. He was our example. So <clears throat> the nobleman's son, John 4 verse 46, he came therefore again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee. And when we're reading the accounts, we always want to look for, did they hear anything? 
Because if they're hearing Jesus teach or hearing something about Jesus, they can get faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. So a lot of times Jesus is teaching, uh, they're hearing that, or they know that Jesus is a, a miracle worker. He's in town. They're, they've been healing, uh, been hearing about this guy, you know, healing all these types of people. And people are saying, hey, man, if you go down the street here, go, you know, half a block or a couple miles or wherever it's at, you get in that meeting and uh, you can be healed. Because, man, everyone that's touching him, you know, there's power coming out of him. And um, people are being healed. <clears throat> so it says, when he heard, verse 47, when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him. So he heard of Jesus first. Notice that hearing always precedes believing. You'll hear first, then you can believe. Remember Romans 10, uh, 14. It says, how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? Heard. You can't believe until you've heard. You can't call until you believe, right? Or act. You're not going to call for Jesus or act. You're not going to go after him unless you have heard first. How shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? So hearing is first. Hearing, the word comes first. And then you can believe. You can't just believe just because something's out there. No. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. Hearing about what Jesus is doing, right? Can, can it stir up your faith? Can it inspire you? And so hearing always precedes believing. Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Again, in him you also, after listening to the message of truth. So you heard first, listening to the message of truth, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you heard first, and then you could believe. Right? So hearing always precedes believing. For you and I, we have to hear first so we can believe, and then we can act. So hearing... And then believing or mixing faith with it and then acting on the word. So that's really, really key when we look at these accounts in the New Testament here. We're looking for faith, right? We're seeing, does the individual have faith or not? Is anything said about them hearing the word, right? Or <clears throat> listening or uh, any actions to, to prove that there would be some faith behind that, right? Just because you have some actions doesn't necessarily mean you're in faith. You have to hear first. You have to have it inside you. <laughs> faith is knowing, right? Faith is of the heart. So uh, back, back to this now. <clears throat> Verse 47. <clears throat> Excuse my throat. Huh? What do you do when you have symptoms? You go on. Just keep drinking water. Relax. Trust in the Lord. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, right? Because faith is the victory. Praise God. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him. He went to him and was requesting him to come down and heal his son. <clears throat> For he was at the point of death. So this guy was going to Jesus requesting him to come down and heal his son. Jesus therefore said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. The royal official said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. <clears throat> Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he started off. And as he was now going down, his his servants met him, saying that his son was living. So he inquired them the hour <clears throat> when he began to get better. They said therefore to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. <clears throat> this is again a second sign that Jesus performed when he had come out of Judea 
into Galilee. So let's look at this. Verse 46, he came therefore again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. That was his first miracle. Remember that? That's in John chapter 2. And one of the keys in John chapter 2 is, Jesus' mom said, whatever he says to you, do it. What's the key for healing, key to for miracles? It's John chapter 2, verse 5. Whatever he says to you, do it. So you want to hear from him. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. Whatever Jesus tells us, that means we can, if he tells us something, that means we can have faith to do that, to act on that. And that's where um, success happens. So he come out of, um, again came out of Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine, and there was a certain royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. So this man traveled about 15 to 20 miles to get to Jesus. He came therefore again to Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. There was a certain royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. So from Cana of Galilee to Capernaum, about 15 to 20 miles. That's a journey. I mean, if you're walking like 20 minutes a mile or so, that's about seven hours of walking. This guy was coming seven hour, eight hour journey, 15 to 20 miles to get to Jesus. That's just one way. He didn't have a car. <clears throat> I don't think he had a, a horse, but who knows what he got. It was a long journey. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and was requesting him. He was requesting him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Now, you know, if in Scripture, you'll see that sometimes Jesus went with the person. They came, and he said, yeah, I'll come with you. Other times, he's like, no, he didn't go, and he would just send the word. It is interesting. So we all have to be led by the Spirit of God in how we're ministering healing to people. Do we go with people, right? Someone wants us to pray for them, but do we go with them, or can we just speak a word, or what do we do? Well, just as Jesus was led um, by the Spirit of God, we are also led by the Spirit of God. And so, let's continue on. Verse 48, Jesus therefore said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. The royal official said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. So he's pleading with him, like, come down. I mean, yeah, maybe we need signs and wonders to simply believe, but, but, but please come, please come. You know, Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. So Jesus didn't go with this guy. What was Jesus' answer to this guy? Go. The guy's saying, come down before my child dies. What's Jesus do? He said, oh, okay, I'll come down and go with him. No. Jesus gave him a word. He said, go your way. Your son lives. That sounds like good news, right? Go your way. Your son lives. So now this man has a choice. Is he going to believe this or not? Because Jesus is not coming down with him right? He's not going to go lay his hands on him. He's not coming down, so now he has a choice. Do I believe what Jesus said or not? That's where we all fall into right here. Do we believe what Jesus said to us? Do we believe what the Bible says to us? And we have a choice. This man had a choice. Jesus said, go your way. Your son lives. So the man did what? He believed the word. Look at verse 50. The man believed the word. If you see believe, that means he has faith, right? Believing and faith are pretty much the same thing. Believing. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, right? So once you're in faith, once you're believing, what happens next? So he heard of Jesus before, Right? That's why he went to him. And then he has a word from Jesus. Go your way, your son lives. So he heard. Now he can mix faith with that word. Right? According to Hebrews 
mix faith with the word. So he hears, now he mixes faith with the word. So he believed the word. What's after that? You hear, you believe, and then act. You act on the word. <clears throat> the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. So what did he do? He started off. And he started off. That means he's had, he, he started heading home another 15 to 20 miles. And what's he got? Just a word from Jesus. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he started off. That was his action. Faith had action to it. He started off. Praise God. This just rings in my heart here. I hope you get it. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he started off. <laughs> See, once you believe, there'll be some action to it. You'll have some works to it. Faith without works is dead. Once you believe, there's works, right? But just because you have action or work, some doesn't mean, necessarily mean you're in faith. You do have to believe. But if you believe, you'll definitely have works to it. Because faith without works is dead. Right? The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he started off. Verse 51. And as he was now going down, his servants met him, saying that his son was living. His servant, as he's going down, so I don't know how far he got, maybe a couple miles, but his servants met him, saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them, them the hour when he began to get better. He asked them the hour when he began to get better. They said, therefore, to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives, and he himself believed in his whole household. Look at that again. He inquired them the hour when he began to get better. They said, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. So picture this. This guy travels 15 to 20 miles, comes to Jesus. Could you come down, heal my son? Jesus didn't go. He gives him a word. Go your way, your son lives. The man believed the word, and he started off. He just simply believed the word, and he started off. When he first came, he wasn't ready for that because he, he thought Jesus would come down. And Jesus said, unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply would not believe. And the guy says, sir, come down before my child dies. And then Jesus just gives him a word, go your way, your son lives. So then the man had the choice to believe the word, and then he started off. So when he starts off, so every step of the way is like his son starts getting better and better and better. He said, when did he, when he began to get better, it says. He inquired of the, the hour when he began to get better. They said, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. Now notice this. <clears throat> and he himself believed. <laughs> right? So this healing was making a, a, a mark on him. He himself believed and his whole household. So they, they, come, they could become followers of Jesus. Like, wow, Jesus is, he's amazing. So he believed the word before, but now he's like, I believe, I believe uh, I think I'll be a follower of his now. He himself believed in his whole household. Can a healing affect a household? Yeah, he himself believed in his whole household. This is again a second sign that Jesus performed when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Now notice when this man believed the word, and we'll wrap up right here. When the man believed the word, he started off and so his faith had works to it. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he started off. Now, when he started off, I mean, the devil is, is the same as now as he was back then. And don't you know the devil was bringing fearful thoughts to him? So the man started off. So he started walking, 
You know, I don't know if he had an animal he's riding on, but he started on his journey. And, and you know, the thoughts are like, oh my gosh, you know, the devil is saying like, you know, he's going to die. He's going to die. This ain't going to work. You need to go get Jesus and bring him back. Yeah, go get Jesus, bring him back. He said, oh, this isn't going to work. His head was spinning, right? It's like, oh, this ain't going to work. But he believed the word that Jesus spoke and he started off. So with every step, he's like casting down imaginations and all these wrong thoughts and negative thoughts coming to him from the enemy. I mean, the devil's still the same, you know? You believe you're healed? You say, oh, no, you're not healed. You're not healed. You know, you're going to get worse. You know, you're going to die. Blah, 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 blah. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke and he started off. And with every step, Every step, he's like, no, you just, I'm setting my face to go this way, this direction. I believe God. I believe the word. I believe what Jesus told me, right? He knew that Jesus had healed before and stuff. That he made that journey. He must have heard. It says he heard of Jesus. You know, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, it says, The weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but mighty before God to the pulling down of strongholds strongholds that are built up in our mind, our thinking, those thoughts, casting down imaginations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, this guy didn't have that verse to know, right? But so he'd still have to like, no, no, Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said it. I believe it. I'm acting on my faith. That's it, right? But, you know, the devil always brings fearful thoughts to you. You know, he's going to die. This didn't, you, didn't do, you didn't do what you should have done. You should have, like, you know, kidnapped Jesus or brought him with you. Get his, you have him lay hands because everyone he lays hands on is getting healed. But he, he didn't do it that way. He did what Jesus told him to do. Go your way, your son lives. And his son was healed and made well because the guy believed what Jesus said, and he acted on his faith. Isn't that awesome? Faith is the victory. First John, First John 5, verse 4 says, Praise God, whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that is overcome in the world, even our faith. Right? Our faith is, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So let's look at another one, right? You'll see the same, same thing here. Praise God, I love that. You know, there comes a point, even with this guy here on his journey here, that there comes a point, when are you going to believe? When are you going to believe that you receive your healing? Because faith has actions. Some people say that seeing is believing. Well, nothing could be farther than from the truth. Seeing is believing, no. Once you see, you don't have to believe because it's right there. Seeing is not believing. You believe first, and then you'll see. <clears throat> like John 11, verse 40, um, before Jesus was about to raise Lazarus from the dead, um, he, he, he told them, he said, did I, not, did I not say to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God? If you believe, you will see the glory of God, if you believe. The psalmist in Psalm 27, verse 13 says, I would have despaired or I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see. I would have despaired, I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see. So when you believe, then you can see, unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Second Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, we walk by faith, not by sight. That royal official here we just talked about, he was walking by faith, not by sight. He was casting down imaginations the whole way. But he had a word from Jesus. Faith is the foundation of things expected, the evidence of things not seen, right? Praise God. We have to come to a point where we believe that we receive. When we believe that we receive, then that's when it works, right? 
Mark 11, 24 says this. You might have heard it before. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. So when do you believe? Before or after you receive? No, believe that you receive and you shall have. Once you have them, well, you believe first and then you can have them. Believe that you receive now. Believe that you receive them right now and you shall have them. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So faith, right, takes it now, believes now that I'm healed. You got to believe that you're healed now based on the word and then expect, expect your body to change. Call your body healed, whole, and strong. All right, let's go to another account here. Mark chapter 5. Turn with me, Mark chapter 5. It's a great day. <clears throat> this story has so much in it. It's the woman with the issue of blood. Some great truth is in this. And a woman, Mark 5, verse 25. And a woman who had had a hemorrhage or an issue of blood for 12 years. So she had been bleeding for 12 years. And had endured much at the hands of many physicians. <clears throat> and had spent all that she had and was not helped at all but rather had grown worse after hearing about Jesus. Highlight that again, just like the other account. After hearing about Jesus, she must have heard that this guy is healing. You know, her friends are telling her she heard that, oh, Jesus is in town. I hear people shouting and people being healed. After hearing about, hearing about Jesus, came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak or his, his garment. His outer garment, it says. After hearing about Jesus, came up in the crowd behind him and touched his outer garment. For she was saying, it says, for she thought, or the, the Greek actually means she was saying. Literally, she was saying. And there's like a continual say in there. She was saying, if I just touch his garments, I shall get well. So she was saying this over and over and over. Let me ask you, how much Bible school did this woman have? I mean, did she have the New Testament to read? No. How much education or Bible knowledge or faith, you know, did she have here? She simply heard of Jesus. And, and that ignited something inside her heart, right? That, that he was healing and she chose to believe that. Of course, now we have the word of God, but here she just heard of Jesus and she mixed faith with that. So again, we're looking at she heard first, now she could believe. And when she believed, therefore she'd have action to it. She'd have works to, to go along with her faith. <clears throat> Verse 27, after hearing about Jesus, came up in the crowd and touched him came up behind him and touched his outer garment, for she was saying, if I just touch his garments, I shall get well. So within herself, where she was saying, she was saying verbally, also within herself, she was saying, if I just touch the hem of his garment, if I just touch his garments, I shall get, just touch his garments. So she knew something about people just touching the garments. She knew there was something about the anointing that was being transferred and going into other people. Now, you know there's a crowd out there. I mean, she really is not supposed to be out in the, in the public right now. She's out bleeding and stuff. But she had to make her way through. Remember, faith does not take, doesn't take no as an answer. She pressed her way through the crowd, right? So, I mean, picture that at least, you know, <laughs> let, let's say there's 40 people at least around. There's a crowd. Even just the, the inner circle there. <clears throat> she had to make her way through all these different tiers of people to get through. So she had to have some strength to do that. She got up. I mean, she didn't. I mean, she could have died out there, right? But she made her way, pressed through the crowd, and she touched him. She might have jumped right at his ankles, you know, and she touched the hem of his garment. 
she just touched the hem of his clothes, right? Not even his skin, but touching the hem of, the, of his, his garment, his outer, outer garment. Of course, we know that, the, you know, that outer garment also represented um, the Word of God with the tassels and everything. That's another teaching. But she touched the Word. <laughs> she touched the Word, the living Word walking by, and also the Word of God representing a, a, that outer garment. She touched him, and what happened? She was saying, if I just touch his garments, I shall get well. If I just touch his garments, I shall get well. And immediately, <clears throat> say immediately, the flow of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. She touched him, and then immediately, <clears throat> The flow, <coughs> I've been preaching a lot today. The flow of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. So she felt in her body. So she touched, power came out of Jesus. And she felt something go into her. She felt in her body that she was healed. Verse 30. Immediately Jesus perceiving in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth. Turned around the crowd and said, who touched my garments? Again, there's a bunch of people touching his garments. So a lot of people can be touching Jesus. They're bumping into him. They're all around. But this was not a casual touch. This was a touch of faith. You know, you might be in church, you might be around a bunch of uh, religious people, that type of thing, but it's not just going through the motions and being in the right church, that type of thing. We want to get to Jesus. We want to touch him. We want to get in contact with the power of God, right? So she touched him. This was a touch of faith. It wasn't a casual touch. She wasn't like, well, let's see what happens. You know, sometimes people get in healing lines and then like the mindset is, well, let's, let's see if they have it. Let's see what happens. We'll see if it works this time. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe this will happen. But faith doesn't say, we'll see if it happens. No, faith says, when I touch his garment, I shall be well, right there. Faith says, I have it now and I'm expecting my body to change, right? It wasn't a casual touch, it was the touch of faith. Immediately, Jesus perceiving himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth. So Jesus sensed power go out of him. The woman sensed power go into her because she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. What's that? That's the anointing. Remember Jesus said in Luke 4, 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And he must have said that over and over and over because he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has known me to preach the gospel to the poor. And people could have faith in that when Jesus spoke and said it. But the woman had even like probably heard from her friends and stuff. She heard that people were getting healed. And so she went and pressed through the crowd. Again, faith has perseverance. Faith has bulldog faith. Faith will get up when everybody else is lying down. Faith gets up and says, I'm pressing through the crowd and I'm going to touch him and I'll be healed. That's confident. Faith is confident. Glory to God. He said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, you see the multitude pressing in on you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see the woman who had done this. So now he, he knows it's a woman who had done this. But the woman fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, no, no, notice this, verse 34, Daughter, my faith has healed you. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> Jesus didn't say that it was his faith. He didn't say my faith has healed you. Or he didn't say, daughter, it's not always my will to heal, and so give that back. You came and took this healing. No, you have to give it back. No, 
Jesus didn't say, like, how come you to think that you could come and just do this? Steal the healing. How do you know it's my will? So Jesus didn't say it was like my faith. You know, you, you got me on a lucky day. You know, it's because of my anointing. Well, thank God for the anointing. But he didn't say it was all that. He just said, Jesus told the truth, right? What did he say to the woman? Verse 34. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Look at it. Your faith. Whose faith? Was it Jesus' faith? Was it somebody else's faith? He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Don't you love it? Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. I like there's another translation that says, Daughter, take courage. Your faith has saved you, which means made you well. Saved. Uh, Greek word sozo it means saved. It means healed. It means delivered. It means, it means soundness of mind. All those things. Saved and healed. Daughter, your faith has saved you, made you well. Take courage. Your faith has saved you. The cure is permanent. <laughs> the cure is permanent. No relapse to your former condition. <laughs> Daughter, your faith has saved you. The cure is permanent. No relapse to your former condition. Glory. Your faith has made you well. Whose faith was it? it wasn't Jesus' faith. So let me ask you a couple questions here. First of all, this woman heard of Jesus. Then she said within herself, and she also saying, she said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. She pressed through the crowd and touched. She felt power go out of him, power go into her. So there's something about the anointing, but she drew on that power. The power was always there on Jesus. It's still there on Jesus. The power of God is in this word as well. And so she touched the power. So faith caused her to touch the power. She said, if I just touch the hem of, the, uh, uh, hem of his garment, it shall be made well. She touched. So faith gives action to the power. You see that? Faith gives action to the power. The power that was on Jesus, her faith drew on that, drew the anointing out, drew the power out, drew the healing anointing out and into her. Faith gives action to the power. You know, you have electricity, you have outlets, you have lights and things like that. <clears throat> but you have to flip the switch on. You have to give action to the, to, to the lights and everything, right? I mean, the lights are just going to be off unless you unless you flip the switch. Well, faith is like flipping the switch and it gives action to the electricity, right? Faith gives action to the power. Faith gives action to the power. Her faith caused the power of God to go into her and heal her. So you see that in the accounts. As, you, as you're reading, so faith will always give action to the power. <coughs> Now, when she gets out there and says, you know, Jesus said, who touched my garments and all that, you know, power come out, who touched my garments? And then, you know, who touched me? Uh, the woman fearing, trembling, aware of what had happened, came here and fell down, told him the whole truth. So this woman pressed through the crowd and touched him and she got healed, right? Here's a big, big question. So whose decision was it for her to be healed? Whose decision was it for this woman to be healed? Was it Jesus' decision? No. It was her decision to be healed. Whose decision is it for you to be healed? Is it up to Jesus? Is it Jesus' decision whether you get healed or not? Your faith will give action to the power. Faith is what, is what connects to the healing power of God. Whose decision was it? It was her decision. You see that? Isn't that awesome? It wasn't Jesus' decision to heal. 
he was on his way actually to go minister healing and raise the little girl from the dead, Jairus' daughter. You remember that? And this woman came up and stopped him right there. Faith will stop Jesus <laughs> in his tracks. Hallelujah. Faith will stop Jesus and have him minister to you. It was her decision. She stopped Jesus. She made a demand on the healing power of God and it came into her body and she was healed. Let's go a little bit further. It was not only her decision to be healed, but she also said when she would be healed. What? That's crazy, right? Well, she said, if I just touch the hem of his garments, I shall be made well. Remember that? She's saying, if I just touch the hem of his garments, I shall be made well. Well, when she touched the hem of his garment, that's when the power came out, right? So it could have been three hours later that she touched him, but that's when the, uh, the power is going to come out into her body. It says immediately, right? Immediately the flow of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. So she drew the power out. She, she felt then. So it's her decision to be healed, and it was her decision when she would be healed. Now think about this. The power came out immediately she was healed, but so what, even if it took an hour or a couple hours? She knew when I touch, she said, if I just touch the hem of his garments, I shall be made well. I shall be made well. Well, so she believed that she received then. I mean, she, she expected that. That was right then. So sometimes you see that the healing was ministered to somebody and it says, then within the hour, they got better. So interesting, right? Interesting thoughts on that. You know, the Bible says that um, in Mark 16, verse 18, Jesus' great commission there, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And then he says in verse 18, they will lay hands on the sick. That's believers. They, believers, will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will recover. So recovery implies a process. So you're supposed to start recovering the moment you believe you receive or the moment hands are laid on you, right? There's many different ways that, that healing can happen that Jesus has provided many different ways. There's the anointing oil, like in James chapter five, we talked about the prayer of faith in there. There's also speaking, just speaking, just by receiving it by faith. And also you could pray, pray the prayer of faith and believe that you receive healing into your body as well. Jesus also spit on a couple of occasions. However the Lord leads us, right? But there's many different ways here. But faith drew the power out. She was healed. She was healed. I was going somewhere with that. Power came out. He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith. Oh, that's right. She was saying within herself, she was saying, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. So when she touched, that's when she was going to be made well. So when you, there's got to be a point when you believe that you received your healing, you take it into yourself. You take it and you don't let go of it. The Bible says again and again, it says, holding fast the word of life. Right? I think it's Philippians 2.16. And then there's... Um, Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And then there's Hebrews 4, 14. Since, we, we, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. So we've got to hold fast the word of God. We believe that we, we receive and say, that's it. Just like the nobleman's son earlier, he's like, he believed the word and he started off. We believe, and then we just start acting on our faith. So her faith, this woman with the issue of blood, she got healed. Faith gives action to the power. Are you ready to release faith? First of all, faith comes by hearing here by the word of Christ. And then what? Once you're in faith, then faith must be released or acted on. Then you declare. 
One of the best ways to declare your healing is by out your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Just say, by his stripe, I was healed. He himself took my infirmities and carried away my diseases. Right? Surely my sickness, he himself bore and my pains he carried. He did it. He took it. He bore it. If he took it and bore it, then I don't have it anymore. Jesus took all my sickness and disease. And so I'm free. And he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So in closing here, how much time do we have? <laughs> I wish we could go on and on. Let me see. We'll end right with that. That's a good note to end on. The woman with the issue of blood, it was her decision. It was her decision when she was to be healed. And faith gives action to the power. Good things to chew on. Meditate on these things. And uh, remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And faith is the victory that overcomes the world. The righteous man shall live by faith, and we also walk by faith and not by sight. Praise the Lord.